In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. Christos Anestin. Brothers and sisters, we know that the general message of the Gospel is repentance, is a change of life, is for us freedom and salvation, is forgiveness of sins, and we constantly repeat these things over and over again. This is the message of the Gospel. But in order for all of that to come into fruition, in order for all of that to bear fruit, in order for all of that to come to life, we must know in one way or another or come to know the truth. All of us, all of us are in search for the truth. But understanding that in this age that we live in, in this society that we live in, with so much diversity, we have lost and become confused and do not, no longer know which direction to go in order to seek and to find this truth. It is not only convincing, it's no longer convincing to know that Christ came to give us the truth. Because any one of us can turn around and say, well, Christ says that He's the truth and that He holds the truth. And Muhammad says that He holds the truth. And Buddha says that He holds the truth. And Ganesh says that He holds the truth. And the Labour Party say that they hold the truth. The Liberal Party say they hold the truth. The Greens say they hold the truth. So you see, brothers and sisters, so many people proclaiming or claiming to have a better way of life, some sort of truth, some sort of relief from the difficult life which we live in. And we must admit, life is not easy. Life comes with its difficulties. Life comes with its tortures. Life comes a lot of the times with its despair and sadness. Life comes with a cross, especially, especially if you, cho if you choose the Christian way of life. Because to be Christian in this day, day and life means to reject everything that the world has to offer us or the world's way of life and thinking. And so, regardless of who we are, brothers and sisters, regardless of the state of our souls, for someone who truly is looking for the truth and who has a genuine heart, God will show them the truth, as he did in today's Gospel reading, to a woman who was, wasn't even a Jew. In other words, she was not the same faith as what Jesus was. She was a Samaritan. She was the arch enemy, or the Samaritans were the arch enemies of the Jews. And on top of that, not only she wasn't a Jew, but she was a sinful woman. Jesus tells her her sins, that she had, she had five husbands. And then on top of that, the person that she's living with now is not even her husband. Now for that day and age, that was severe you were considered as an outcast. In this day and age, that's considered as normality. See how much times have changed. And yet, that did not stop Christ coming and giving the truth to this woman. Because when she did perceive that he was a holy man, when she did perceive that he was a prophet, immediately her first question was, what is the truth? How do we worship God? So she was seeking the truth regardless of the state of her own soul. And Christ came, showed her the truth, and today she is a saint of the church, Saint Fortini, equal to the apostles, regardless of the sinful state of her soul. The same thing with Paul in the Gospels. His name was Saul. 
He was a persecutor of the Christians. Why? Because he had so much zeal for his own faith. Even though his faith was a wrong type of faith, he had zeal. He wanted truth. And so God revealed to him the truth, despite the fact that he was persecuting Christians. And from Saul, he became Paul, the greatest of the apostles. The same thing with Matthew, the tax collector, who was also a sinful man. And yet, just by Christ's words and him seeking the truth, he was able to find the truth. And so, brothers and sisters, when you are confronted with all of this confusion, when you are confronted with which way to go this way or that way, ask in your heart, Jesus, what is the truth? Show me the truth. And I assure you that in one way or another, Christ will come to your aid. He will see the intentions of your heart and reveal to you the way which you should go. Christ tells us to leave everything and to follow him. You pray in your heart and you say, Jesus, is this the truth? The world tells us to follow the world, to follow the luxuries, to follow the wealth, to follow the fame. We pray in our heart and we say, Jesus, is this the truth? The world tells us that today, a man and a man and a woman and a woman, is a, it's acceptable for them to be married. And there's so much confusion about that. You pray in your heart and you say, Jesus, is this the truth? And with a genuine and sincere heart, Christ not only will show you the truth, He will make you a follower of that truth. The truth which liberates all of us, sets us free, takes us out of the darkness and places us into the light. And this is what happened with this Samaritan woman. She, just from a very short conversation with Jesus, left everything and ran to tell the people in the village about Christ. She had what we call a holy madness. Because it's true, to follow Christ in this day and age requires a madness, a craziness. And you see what happens when you leave everything to follow the Christian way and the gospel. Immediately you have the people mocking you, attacking you. Why are you following this? Why are you behaving like that? Why are you doing this? Why are you doing that? It's madness to the world and it doesn't make sense. The only one, the only person that it makes sense to is yourself. Because inside your heart, you feel the lightness. Inside your heart, you feel liberated. Inside your heart, you feel the reassurance that the way you are heading is the correct way and the only way to salvation. We need to follow the example of these people and truly ask in our hearts the truth for all of those who want to know the truth. For some of us, we want to know the truth. For other people, the truth is not in, in their best interests. And so no matter how much they hear about the Word of God, the, no matter how much they hear about Jesus, no matter how much they hear about the truth, their ears and their eyes are closed because it does not suit their lifestyle. Because a lot of the time, truth means courage. Truth means strength. Truth means a change of life. And many of us are not willing to make that change in our life because Christ, we have not allowed Christ to come and touch our heart and give us the strength, the patience and the endurance that we need. All of these people, brothers and sisters, that you see painted on the wall made a sacrifice, a sacrifice for truth. All of them, brothers and sisters, had this reassurance and most of them gave their life in the most torturous ways. And they gave it because they knew that this was the only way 
to freedom and salvation. These people were not mad or crazy the, world, the way that the world wants to see them. These people knew that the, our only source of strength and the only truth comes from Jesus Christ. So brothers and sisters, regardless of what your own life is, regardless of your own sins, put all that aside for now. And if you truly care about what is good and what is truthful, pray to God to show you the way to truth. Pray to God to open up your heart and in one way or another to touch it so that you can be revealed that which was revealed to the saints. That was which was revealed to those who are now enjoying and living in the kingdom of God. Amen.